Welcome gamers to episode 4 of this Let's Play series. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome to the channel. Hope you've been enjoying the series so far. Things are going to start to heat up. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Uh, we've got uh, we've now met the other two factions that are on the on the map with us. They're sort of uh, compressed into the corner. Uh, you know, if you sort of got rid of this outside area, that's exploitation. Actually, where's this supply ranges? If you get rid of the supply ranges, that's sort of where we are in the grand scheme of things. Like the um, the and one thing that's of interest here is the relative circles that we actually have. This is sort of like the influence we have from our systems. You can see we're really actually not doing all that well in terms of of what we control. Uh, this, these guys have got like two colonies, at least two colonies back and through here, plus another area back and through here, similar to what the way that we've got this with theft. They're going to have a, an outpost there. The humans have got another outpost down through this side. We just created a trade uh, network with the humans, and it's going to be draining our, our resources just for a little while. So if I hover over that, it should show up. So the expenses that we actually have, uh, Empire expenses, uh, 45.9, um, getting minus 14 from leader wages, minus 2.3 from trade treaties. There we go. So it, at the moment, it's costing us money to, to set up the trade network with the um, with the humans and so we're going to be sort of trading with them now i'm not sure exactly where the system will be wanting to sort of then go and and sort of establish that but that will take some time about 10 turns to start to turn that into a profit and i want to try to keep this relationship going as strong as i possibly can uh, we don't have hardly we've hardly got any money so we've sort of we really are struggling quite badly and just seeing the relative circles here we are miles and miles and miles behind. So, so it's not good. We're playing on hard and we do actually have a difficult time. And we've had a hard trot here because we just haven't been able to do any real research. Our research is terrible in comparison to everybody else's. In fact, we can see exactly what's going on. One thing I love about this game is you can actually just go to your Empire screen and have a look and see actually how you're going. And so this is the uh, history graph with the uh, technology. So we can sort of see what the uh, what the tech uh, things actually are. And you can see there that we really are a long, long way behind the others, like a long way behind. Uh, it took us so long to get the first tech level. And then we've just sort of slowly been, you know, bouncing up a little bit, but we're we're less than half, um, less than half the humans, and um, and then we've got the uh, Nova Vita as well. Like if we get rid of them, you know, that, that that's where the humans are behind the Nova Vita in terms of technology, but we're miles behind those in terms of our production capabilities. Miles and miles behind. The humans are actually now out producing the uh, Nova Vita, so uh, that's actually working through there. The fleet size, we're um, we've only just got the two ships that we started with. They've actually gone, they had an extra ship by the looks of things. Uh, they then got a lot more, a lot more. So again, they're miles and miles more ships than what we've got so far. Uh, we're going to have to correct that. That's going to be important. Population wise, we're sort of middling along. We've got the same level of population as Nova Vita, but we are behind the humans. Uh, culture wise, we're going to be, we're sort of heading up there now that we've got a cultural um, Building, so we're starting to now sort of push up a little bit there, but we did start a long way behind the others. And overall, we're miles and miles behind. So in terms of the overall sort of uh, score, the combined score through there, uh, we've got trade treaties in here with the humans. So you have a trade treaty with the human federation for the loss of two BC every turn from the deal. That will change slowly as that sort of then does develop. So we want to sort of foster that as much as we can. And you can see through here that we're coming last in everything except for population. <laughs> so it's not, not a very good start, is it? Uh, this is a problem for us. And we saw in the last episode, we had the um, the Galactic Council vote and the uh, Nova the Nova Prime group in through here uh, have certainly um, you know got the, the, the lion's share of the votes. So we don't know what they've actually got down this way just yet. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff that's going on through here. So anyway, we've got uh, remote exploration activities, uh, nothing here to report. I'll just go and go to the next one so we can now sort of push forward a little bit. Let's just go and have a look in these areas. In fact, I've still got two going there. That's okay. Um, now we've got diplomatic action. So diplomacy request pending. The Nova Vita. So they have a small favor they ask from you. Now this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so we've foreseen that this galaxy without the guiding light of the Nova Vita is doomed to uh, forever fall into darkness. You have to uh, have a, uh, to have us sustain this light. The cost for you is a meager 5% tribute for 30 turns. You can agree to pay such a small price to secure the future. Isn't that right? Now, if we do that one, so that's a 5% tribute. 5% um, of not much is not much. So... Um, 
I think I'm going to go yes because I really like these guys. They're they're coming first in everything. So I think I'm just going to go yes. You can have your way. So if we have a look at this one, here, a total of 2.6 BC would be paid each turn. Not very much in the, in the grand scheme of things. So let's just go ahead with that one. So um, uh, yeah, tribute is calculated over the empire's income. So we'll do that for 30 turns. That way we keep them on side. That way we've got that much time to then start to uh, to become more powerful. And we'll need to do that. Magnificent. So they're going to become on side. Now we may even get to a position where we can actually trade with them for a little while as well, which uh, if we can do that, I will actually take that on board. So we've now got in, we're getting a little bit less in through here, unfortunately, but that's something we'll be able to eventually fix up as we start to sort of get better with these little worlds that we actually have in through this side. Uh, we've got space culture level ups. Is it time? Is it time to go this way? Empire can purchase available technologies from the research tree. Um, I think we might do this actually if we have a bit of a look and see what we've got. Our research is coming from, uh, look, we've got 10.3 coming from the Empire income. Um, so two BCs is, is equating to one RP at this point in time. 10.4 uh, is coming from the colonies where we're getting 5.6 from population, 4.8 from the events of, of one of those populations. Uh, that would that will dwindle away to zero, but we'll then be able to sort of push in more money to actually then go and, and actually generate more, I think. Plus three from interstellar research. And through there, plus 10 from leaders. So they're, they're not going to change. And uh, so it gives us at the moment a, a, a 33.7. If we go through and um, if we go through and now upgrade this one. So the Empire can purchase available technologies from the tech tree. So we can actually purchase them using 1 BC per um, per RP of a remaining research cost. Uh, so Empire's techs cannot be stolen from fleet combat, raids or invasion. Empire's ships self-destruct when they would be captured and no research produced by POPs of this race. Now, that's something that I think I might... Um, yeah, that's it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a 50-50 bet at this stage. After we get that one, when we get seven... Uh, oh, sorry, four. four so we've already got enough to generate one of these up once we get this one we can get this one next so we can either get iron cannon technologies unlocked if unknown and unlocks the peacekeeper bay so that's the effects of getting this one the peacekeeper bay is a special system so four peacekeepers each equipped with uh, two times point defense iron cannons the peacekeeper squadron does four attack rounds and then returns the carrier for repairs rearming and refueling it can only be equipped in cruisers and above cruisers can equip two hangar bays so that gives us Unlocks the yeah the peacekeeper base the ship special system so we get sort of like better better attack stuff in through there if we go this way we get uh, empire patrols acquire sorry leads to galactic security initiative perk empire's borders grow 100 percent faster uh, 10 plus 10 bc per turn per system within the empire's borders and each new uh, each new system they claim to protect their vigilant patrols also discover new opportunities so that's actually a really good one for us to get the money. I think we'll go this way. So let's go Technophiles. So yes, we want to go that way. That's going to then give us a, uh, a negative now at this point in time with the research. But we can actually now go and actually buy research if we have to. So the Fusion Drive is going to come still three turns. That's OK. I'll, I'll let that one sort of develop as it does come through. Um, if I keep on pushing this one up, I don't know if I want to do that. I'll just have it sort of thump along there just so we get a lot more money. We need to get a lot more money coming in. Uh, leader approaches you with a proposal. What do you say? So this is a colony leader. No, I don't need this one. So I'm just going to go and say maybe later. And we finally have colonization event for Zoth. Now, hopefully this isn't going to be anything too bad. Um, Emperor, upon founding our colony of Zoth 1, we have learnt that this colonisation was the pet project of an influential individual in our empire. This entrepreneur wishes to remain private, but they worked behind the scenes to load the colony ship with extra supplies and machinery, which are now at Zoth 1's disposal. What should we do? So, okay, this is cool. So there's no negatives with this. We got uh, use the extra supplies for the colony infrastructure and send a note of thanks to our benefactors. So plus one infrastructure level to the colony, or we can use the extra supplies to create a robotic factory at the colony and and quietly put the donor's name on a plaque at the entrance. This will be the one that we go for. Not so fast. Track down this influential person and find out what it'll cost to get them to help the empire more openly. So we get uh, plus 100 BC to the empire reserves and one colony governor approaches the empire. I'm going to go this way here because I don't want any more. I don't want to be paying any any more to. Um, 
to various people. We're already only got trade goods back in through Dadstopia, and we do need to go back and start to change this up and start to get um, better things than what we actually currently have. Now, this has meant that we've got the um, Zoth 1. We did actually have the robotic factory back in here at that stage, and we've now got it there. So the construction queue is now gone. I think what we'll do is we'll go and grab ourselves a star base initially. Um, it's going to give us even more ship supports, and then we can then start to build a bit more effectively as well. So that's going to cost a. It's going to take a fair bit of time to, to go and grab that one there. Now we've got an outpost ship through there, which is not really important. We've got this one supplying this. God, if we if we do go into here, I really do need to get these other things. Plus 10 through there. If I move that down, it's too much. So I do need to keep that up there for a little while until we really, really get on top of the money situation, which will take some time. These guys have to arrive at their planets and then we should be okay, I think. So let's wait for that. Four turns. Um, okay, so we'll end our turn here. A lot, lot of things going on. Right, so we've now hit the uh, 7x system. Uh, now we actually have come across with as an enemy fleet. Now I'm just going to bow out from here. We don't know anything at all about this particular fleet. Uh, confirm that you stand down. Yes, we're not going to be attacking anything. That's actually a human fleet, so that's actually okay. Uh, we've now seen the 7x system. Just go and grab our ship, and we will have another look back in through here. I'll just turn back on the, um, the supply range. So that one's just outside our range anyway. So we're coming to there. This one's still zipping across this side of the galaxy. Don't know what it's trying to actually do. Actually, there's a there's an interesting one there. Hmm, okay. Diplom diplomacy request pending. The Nova Vita proposed a trade treaty. Okay, cool. So we go yes. In this case, we're just going to be friendly. Now this one here, we're going to get a negative 3 BC to start with. And then eventually, once fully established, this trade route will generate up to 5 BC income based on the current condition of both empires involved. Uh, so the maximum in income generated can be increased over time as both empires continue to develop. Maximum of 3.75% of the weakest empire's total production converted into BC plus empires from modifiers. Now we get a big modifier bonus for trade, so this is actually good for me. So by giving them some money, ultimately, if, they can, if we can sort of stay on the good side of them for a long period, and maybe we end up with these two fighting, uh, we'll be able to slowly build up our fleets and, and our income and really sort of start to march forward. It looks like we may be able to grab all of this at some point as well in the future. Uh, we need to get enough ships to be able to go and take out, out these sorts, of, uh, these sorts of, of ships in through this side. Now we've got the survey ship there. Let's just go across to here. Um, next turn, yeah, we'll just go across there. So everything's friendly. <laughs> Everything's friendly at the moment. We should actually create, like, try to create peace treaties. Maybe we'll have a quick look and see. I don't know if we have to. Yeah, these guys have got nothing. They've just got a basic contact. Let's go and talk with these guys. So, um, uh, no more treaties seem possible to be signed for the Human Federation for now. Try boosting relations with them to unlock more possibilities. So that'll happen slowly over time, I think. We'll sort of slowly sort of... Uh, get things to sort of happen. We'll just wait for that to actually occur. Okay, there's more and more yeah. coming in. New sector, so we'll just go this way. Just keep on sort of uh, searching around in these locations. Actually, that one there is even better because it's uh, got one less because our survey ship is inside that particular sector. All right, so we've got uh, the Fusion Drive has now, been, uh, has now been designed. So we've now got fast travel, fast movement. Um, now that's our fleet. Why are we heading off? Oh, we're going to that system. That's why. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. And here we go. We've now found our first um, first minor sieve in this in amongst all of these planets that are in here. So we'll start there and have a bit of a look. So we've got a, a non-exclusive access to a minor civilization, and if we locate it, there it is down there. So we can see down through here. This species inhabiting this planet specializes in, de in, in delivering intelligent answers to complex problems. With further study, we can discover how to tap into their vast array of knowledge and begin putting it to use in our scientific endeavors. Um, we've got um, 
access status for the empires. We're the only one with access to them at this stage. We get plus 0.5 RP per pop in the empire. So I um, don't know if we actually do get that because of the uh, because of the way that we've actually sort of evolved our groups. Um, so maybe we don't. We maybe don't. Let's have a look and see. Plus three from Distiller Research. You're not seeing it in there. You're getting plus six one from population. Plus four point eight from events. Plus six one six point one from minor civilization. So, but you'll see there it's times as times uh, nothing basically. So we get zero from colonies, even though technically we should be getting a fair bit. So it, it doesn't really help us much. So it's not really of any great value to us. <laughs> so uh, if if we had to then go and take that one over, we would. Now we've claimed that one, that one, that one. We'll go down to the, the Sith area or the Chith area and see what we've got in through there. Uh, we've got the research complete on the fusion drive. What technology should we research next? So um, if we have a look, I'm going to have to start building ships. So I think we'll go with battle pods. Actually, what else have we got? Pressurized domes. We don't need those. Um, I might go for the better beam initially. It's 10 turns for one of these or 10 turns for the particle accelerator. Maybe we'll go the particle accelerator. Let's go and go the kinetics. I do like kinetic weapons in, in these sort of games just for the, I don't know, the, the feel of them. <laughs> Being able to have rail guns does sort of sound good. What we could do is actually go back to here at some point and then zip across, actually from here at, at Gorilla. We've already been there, but that's that does actually allow us to go all the way across to there to have a look to see what's going on. Uh, we're close. Uh, don't know, don't know. Maybe we should actually have a look because we don't know what's over there just yet. So um, now we've done these. We've had a quick look at this one. We've also got a fleet report. A, a powerful creature special has been found on... Uh, Flufant 2 in the Flufant system, so again, just more stuff in through there. Uh, now our other ship is still coming in, we'll just wait for that one. Alright, so we have another exploration that we can now go and do. This one's still not quite in there yet, we'll just do this one here. In the next turn we should then be inside the system, so we'll have like a, a an extra, like it'll be five to do get the next one because the survey ship will be there. Um, we are now in here. Now we've got a barren world. We don't know what the richness is, and we also have a gas giant there. I'll just leave them alone. The barren worlds we can eventually um, settle if we wanted to, but I don't really want to be doing that one just yet. Let's go up to here. And um, let's go next turn. Oh, a crystal entity. So something has moved in here since we actually have been here before. So we'll just go to combat. Now, this is why you put a, a combat ship in with your civilian ships. If we didn't have that, we'd lose our survey ship, and that would be disastrous because it would take so long to build another one. So we'll just go to combat. Now, that's actually firing a missile straight away. So I'm not going to hover around here. I'm just going to get right out of here. I'm just going to flee straight away. So that'll do us end our turn because I don't want that thing hitting me. Bang, off we go. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to come back and attack that one at some point when we've got a big enough fleet. It's going to take some time to do that. So unfortunately, we've got this creature here, which is causing us an issue, and we're now going to have to zip across. Actually, one thing I can do is I can go back down this way. And actually, no, I do want to go and have a look at this one, and then we want to we can just bounce across this side, I guess, and have a bit of a look to see what else there is around the place uh, as we sort of come through. But this is actually why you do put, with your fleets, a military ship with a civilian ship. So at least... Um, at least escort them because I don't know when this thing arrived. I don't know how it got there. Um, we do still get to see what was in here. So we've got an ancient shipyard in through this side. So a very old but highly advanced structure, which can be, which can uh, we can call a shipyard, or at least uh, the, rem the remains of it lies in the surface of the planet. This huge complex once served a, a large, a, a, a build large shipyards, and while it, it's somewhat degraded by the passage of time. The remains will provide a huge boost to, boost to aerospace infrastructure in a colony built here. Now, that's a that's a huge acid world, which isn't any good for us. So we can't actually make use of that one. But that would be that would be nice to have had that one if it was a big ice world, <laughs> but it's not, not even not even close. Um, he's now leveled up yet again, so he's in a, his command is two in a frigate. 
no, sorry, he's command two now, he can go into destroyer. Let's go back across now. Maybe we'll go to initiative because I do want to make sure we get the first move. It's quite important that we have the first move, particularly if we've got like a weak fleet. So current level plus two to fleet initiative. Yep, so new level is going to be four. So plus four to, to fleet initiative. So we'll just go yes. And we have espionage or explorer. Explorer is what we want. We want to learn that one. So we want to end up having him as a uh, as an expert explorer, which means he can go back in the second time to these ruins. Uh, choose a new sector to re to remotely do. Now we've we're still inside. Technically, we're inside this system because we're right on the Chith system. So let's get get started in there. Uh, we've now found more helium threes back in through this side. Arrival new settlement report. We've discovered a neutron star. Uh, where do we find that? Down here. Okay, so this is the one down through this side, the Shad Eye system, and um, that's unexplored. So we do need to get a ship down there. We'll move this one back down eventually, have a bit of a look at that one down there. Uh, everything else is looking good. It's looking great. Okay, so next turn. And um, Starship Constable's uh, crew experience has increased from green to regular. Now what that will do is if we have a look at the actual fleet itself, um, in here, actually no, it's not going to show us there. We'll have to look at it when we get there, but it'll have like a little star saying that it's actually now gone up a level. Next turn. All right, see, so there's a little star there. And oh, here we go. We've actually got a crystal entity offspring has actually now come to our our world and is now in, over, the, over, the plan, over the actual planet. So now we have to escape from here. We're going to go to combat. Again, it's, it's uh, fired something. These are not as, anywhere near as powerful as the others, but we still are no, it's, we, don't, we don't have a hope in hell of beating this thing off. So I'm just going to flee from here again as well. But we, this will be the one that we need to destroy first. We'll end our turn there. Now we're going to need to get protection because this is actually at our colony. Just click on done. It wants to go down to Daztopia, which is fine. We have to go to something that we control. It can be an outpost or a colony. So it's now going to be zipping down this way. We'll then head out through this other side. So this thing has just arrived in the system. It must have arrived at exactly the same time that we that we were here. So it's having babies and sending them out and about. Um, not good. <laughs> not good at all. Uh, back up through this side. We've just got a nothing up that way. Uh, we'll send this one back down. Now that's going to be five turns. It's going to be three to there and another two to there. I think we might, if I go that way, that's four. There's nothing much really to do. It's two there. It's not going to help. I'm, just, I'm going to have to go through this, this nebula, really. We'll just go that way. Okay, next turn again. All right, so we're starting to sort of pick this up a little bit now. What I might do is um, is turn off the trade goods for a little while. Get the economic capital. This is going to then boost it. So we've got enough now to just to hover this one on for the nine turns that we require for that to sort of then kick in. We've got a leader approaches with a proposal. This one is fairly good and fairly cheap. But we don't really, it's a lone wolf, which aren't great, but I'm, I think I'm just going to go maybe later with him. New sector. So we now have uh, the ability to do this one because our, our ship is traveling through here. And um, I'll leave that one. I don't know where this guy's going. Sort of bouncing into places and then bouncing out. They may have a special ability to do that. Okay, Zaxar has leveled up. So this is a colony leader. Uh, gained a level, salaries increased by plus 2 BC, so we're going a bit further backwards. Uh, and uh, you can choose the primary skill. Okay, so we've got, like this one is a scientist, secondary skill, planetologist, and a psyops, and is also trusting. All right, so what we'll do here is go to corporate, where we get 20% uh, bonus to production and trade asteroid explo exploitations, I think, or administration. Um, it's only a small world. Let's go corporate, I think. Go that side. Now we've got Trailblazer, basic, so plus, one, uh, plus 100 production when building colony base in the system and plus 10%. So this is a Trailblazer. We're not going to be building any more colonies in this system. Planetologist advanced. 
plus 50% of planetary engineering in all colonies in the system. We'll learn that one. So he is here, I think. He or she? Yeah, Zaxar is in here. There's only a small world. And um, pretty weak. And I am sort of trying to push this star base out. But, you know, we, we are getting bonuses in through there. In fact, if I go this way, I can get my population. I can get a lot faster. Let's do that. I mean, we're going to start to... Um, get that in five turns or even if I just move it in a little bit four turns there before we then get the population by, by heading it towards this um, production interplanetary into interplanetary areas back and through that side um, okay so we'll now just go and uh, go back out from there if we have a quick look at research how are we going um, yeah you can see there we can buy these things out so uh, you can purchase the particle accelerator for 50 BC. I can do some of these others as well now as well. 70 for those. The deep core mine I'm interested in getting just to get the extra production. And I'm also interested in the um, subsurface vault, but that's going to cost me too much at this stage. This is the new stuff that we now have with our, um, with, with our upgrade. Anyway, eventually we'll make a lot of money and we'll be, we'll be okay. <laughs> Let's just continue on. Now, how are we going with our with our trade? Um, do we get to see any of the actual trade systems? That's the sensors. We do actually have a sensor range now around our around our systems. Um, that's just strategic resources back in through there. Uh, we've got the uh, show systems of colonizable planets, so we do actually have like a small small indicator back up there. This is cool. This is the um, the star distance measuring tool and so you can just click on a tool on a measure over through here and over to there and you get the, the parsec distance uh, of anything really just to sort of get a bit of a feel for how far things are and then your ships travel a certain number of parsecs uh, again allows creating and managing rally rally points rally points instruct to produce ships to automatically travel and we also then have enables or disables showing all the rival fleets lines which are, are not going to apply a settlement so we're not seeing those at all at this stage i'll just leave them where they all are we're still not seeing where the like with the trade networks. We have a bit of a look up to here. The trade, um, if we do go across into here, if we go to information. I don't know if we can sort of see how much we have with trade. We don't have much intelligence here. We'll come back and do spy missions at some at some other time, but I don't know if I, I don't want to be pushing anything. Uh, through this way just yet all right all right all right so um, we will just go next turn justice tacticus here yeah, for this is our next turn now we can do this one in seven turns so your rogue planet is actually uh, a bosun star is very likely and a rogue planet likely so let's do that well, we've got a bit of a bit of a wriggle on with uh, what we can actually find in through here. So I think the more we can find back in through these sorts of areas, the, the better for us. Uh, we do need to we'll get the economic um, the economic capital, which this will be very very important for our money. Money is now becoming critically important for us. Uh, so we've got the um, this particular system, uh, small asteroid. Yeah, that's okay. And we're going to uh, stand down. We're not going to be attacking this particular fleet. It's a, an ally fleet. <laughs> so why would we attack it? Um, now we've got the um, the survey ship has now come back in here. Let's just start to move out to these different systems with the survey ship. We'll just go and do all of these and have a bit of a look. This one here, what to do with it? I think we might just go back to the Zoth system. I need to get better ships. I'm going to need to get... Uh, some uh, some shielding on the ships as well. Just go next turn. Particle accelerator. So we've now got the kinetic uh, the kinetic weapon. So that's a good one for us to have. And we'll just keep on sort of trying to get some of these things. Now we've got the particle accelerator through there. Fighter bays, the iron cannon. Damage electronic systems and make them inoperable. But it's uh, charged on iron bursts. No damage uh, to hull or armor. It's not something we really need. I think we're going to go class two shields at this stage. Marine 
garrison. We don't. Do we need that? Actually, we do get a bonus with this. If I go that way, I can then get the better shielding. It's only 11 turns for that. Let's go that way, and then we'll come back for other things. Now, we're, st we're still going at negative 2 in through this side. That will change soon when we get this economic capital. Leader approaches you with a proposal. This is another calling leader. A fairly good one, but way too expensive for us. We are really the poor cousin in this in this game. But at least we've got the majority of the empires, like the, the majority of space we sort of have, we can get control over. Actually, they've taken this location. So they've actually gone in and grabbed this already. So that's actually now part of them, which means that all of this now opens up to them. We have to be pretty careful here. All right, so neutronium uh, strategic resource has been revealed back in through this side. And so we can now get um, to protect, so neutronium armor coating or a neutronic, a neutronic rejuvenation. So that's to protect or to harm neutronium shells, which will sort of be used in the plus 10% kinetic weapon damage per source, uh, and neutronium bombs. I might go that way because we've just got ourselves the new, the, the kinetic weapons. Yeah, we've got this guy has now come into here. So yeah, we'll go and search that one. And we actually found ourselves a um, an area in there when we were doing the search. Not that we have anything we can we can do with that one just yet. So let's just leave it where that is. So next turn, and um, still two to go there. A couple of miles off with these. The Zoth system is taking a long time to um, to get what it needs but we were trying to get the population up actually we just did let's now go and pump this one out as fast as we can so we still have six that we can sort of have in through this side we'll just keep it going god if any of these other two get aggressive we're in, look at look at the difference here like they're just getting so much more powerful than us now we have a culture perk. We can get one of these. So we'll have a look and see. So um, this is the Peacekeeper protocols. So it's uh, iron cannon technology is unlocked, if unknown, unlocks the Peacekeeper bays, so ship special systems. Four, four Peacekeepers each equipped with two times uh, point defense iron cannons. The Peacekeeper squadrons does four attack rounds and then returns to the carrier. So we don't really have carriers as such. Um, actually, I wonder if we get a carrier with that one. Squadron commander and, com uh, and command carrier leader Skills also affect Peacekeeper strike craft. Well, I think this is the one that we wanted to go with, which is the um, Empire patrols. So the Empire's borders grow 100% faster and plus 10 BC per turn per system within the Empire's borders. I think we go that way. Money is the key for us at this stage. So we're now going to be getting a lot of money coming in, which means that we don't have to then push as much as what we actually have been doing. So we could throw this in there a little bit, just get this a little bit faster. Well, having said that, actually, maybe we don't do that. Maybe what we do is actually come back, get heaps of money, and then we just go and buy what we want. That might be the better way to do this, actually, so we don't put anything in there. We just keep just accrue all the money in through the side. Um, that looks like a good idea, I think. In fact, we can go even more that way and get sort of like less production it does, it, that, that only comes out of there. This comes out of the general production. I think it's worth doing this. That way we can just go straight in and go, okay, well, what do we want? We can buy this one out now for um, for 103. We've got, we've got only, only got 109. Now the um, battle pods I do want to get. I can get that one for 70 if I wanted to. I think I'll wait until I've got like a lot of money and then we'll just go and buy everything we want. <laughs> we'll do a shopping spree. Actually, I'm out of time, guys. I'm going to leave it here. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.